calling it good props, calling it good information is fucking trash. How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the studio. Feels good to be back. And today, not only am I going to be covering the drama, the beef that unfolded on Instagram a day or two ago, but I'm also going to be answering some questions that you guys left on a community post. I've had a quick sneaky look through the questions and there are some really good topics, some really interesting stuff. So I think we'll start with the questions and then later in the video, we'll talk about exactly what happened between Illusionist and Kayla Morelli, two titans of the magic world at the moment, and there were some interesting words exchanged, and we're gonna talk about why it happened, we're gonna talk about what caused it. I think it's pretty interesting. I've got some interesting thoughts on it, but we're gonna start with the questions. Uh, there's a time code if you're just here to learn about Illusionist and Kayla Morelli, but uh, yeah, first question comes from Gleb Brow. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that name correctly. Uh, Gleb Brow says, how does your editing workflow work from the screenwriting until editing the video? It's a really interesting question, something that I really could make a whole video about, just how I make videos, which would be very meta. But essentially, I don't script my videos, certainly with not something like this. I, I don't script every single word. I've tried it in the past and there are, I think, three or two or three videos that I've scripted every single word of and just recited that to the camera. And for me, watching them back, I can tell that there's something just a little bit off about it. I don't dislike the videos per se, but there's something that just doesn't quite work. I much prefer the natural way of just talking about it off the top of my head. But if there's a certain point I want to get across, I will make bullet points. And I think that really just helps keep it structured and uh, yeah, definitely to the point so I'm not just rambling. I tend to only use around a quarter of what I film. So if I film for an hour, the video is probably gonna be about 15 minutes long, but often it's sort of less than that. I really am brutal when it comes to the edit, but I love the edit. I think the editing is maybe my favorite part of the process. I just love it, I really enjoy it, and I think that is where good videos are made, in the edits, because you can take sort of any amount of footage, and I believe somewhere within that footage there is the perfect video. I think I heard somewhere, and I don't know where this quote is from, uh, so excuse me, but I heard a quote somewhere that a statue is inside a big lump of rock, and it's the sculptor's job to just take away everything that's not part of that statue. I think that quote just sums up editing for me. There's a perfect video somewhere. It's my job to get as close to that as possible. Uh, next question comes from Piano Tube, Leon Bricked. What is your favorite magic gimmick under 30 pounds? Interesting, under 30 pounds. I mean, you can get a good gimmick for under 30 pounds. 30 is quite a lot for a single gimmick. So I would say if you're looking to spend 30 pounds, maybe get a selection of different things. I mean, in your comment, you mentioned loops. I'll come to that in a second. I think loops are great. Loops are really, really versatile. You want something to be versatile, I think, something with more than one use. I'm gonna have to say, just off the top of my head, Svengali deck. I love Svengali decks. I think they're so underrated, so versatile. You could get a few for 30 pounds, or again, you could throw in some loops or whatever. I think there's a lot of good options, but don't go for something that just does one trick. Leon also asks, I'm struggling with loops at the moment. They keep snapping, but I'm not putting too much pressure on them. What do I do? They shouldn't be snapping straight away. I've had loops that last more than six months, and that is all down to warming them up. You can't just go straight in with performing with them because they're gonna go, they're gonna snap straight away and that is not what you want. So you need to warm them up and you need to do that gradually. So just gentle stretches to start off with, getting gradually bigger over, you know, quite a long period of time, 15 minutes maybe. Spend 15 minutes per loop just warming them up before you go out and perform. And if you do it gently enough, they shouldn't snap. Don't worry about them snapping because ultimately they don't last forever, but warm them up and they should be good. Loop advice from Kevin. This is a weird one, but could you please do a video on how to structure a close-up performance? Like where should I have my chop cut routines, my card trick routines, and how to transition into tricks? Jake, that is an amazing question. What you can do in a routine is just do a trick and then another trick and then another trick. And in certain situations, that's fine. I think in certain environments, that is okay. Even though it's a basic way of doing it, it's it's all right, you can do that. If you're in a busy party or a busy restaurant or a nightclub, like that is a, that is a high intensity environment and people can get distracted. You know, the drinks might arrive, there might be a friend they wanna go and say hello to. So the magic, keeping them focused on the magic is much harder in an environment like that. But to keep them engaged, 
you need to use something called, I don't remember the name of the technique, but I think it's called opening and closing the loop. Now this is a technique that I learned from Stephen Bridges, who is a very, very good YouTuber, currently doing a brilliant series on card counting, but he is a busker, uh, and a lot of his videos are about busking. And I sent him an email a while ago saying, how do I stop people walking away in the middle of my show? And Stephen very kindly replied to this and said some fantastic advice that really changed the way I thought about a lot of performances, not just busking. But opening and closing the loop is essentially making your tricks overlap, which is kind of backwards to the way we're taught how to perform magic. You know, you're sort of taught one trick and then another, but in busking, you can't do that because the gaps between tricks are excuses for the audience to walk away. It's essentially like a finale and you don't really want there to be a finale until the very end. So what you can do is introduce the prop for the next trick during the one you're currently doing. So for instance, just before you get to the end of the cups and balls, you introduce the prop for the linking rings. Maybe you put the linking rings on the table and make the lemon appear inside the ring or whatever. Maybe you hand it out to be examined and you know, you're constantly sort of hyping up the next thing. You've just got to continue attention on the tricks you're performing. Like it's never over. Like the whole show is just one big trick and they just meld seamlessly from one to another. Now don't rush from one trick to another because you still need, you know, an applause cue. You still need the moment where the spectator goes, oh my God, that's amazing. Or whatever they do, you know, probably a little bit more natural than I did. A nice way of doing this actually in close up or in, you know, you're just sort of normal magic environment is Having one prop in more than one trick, I think really, really helps because then you don't need to introduce anything new. If I'm using a piece of string in one trick and a piece of string in another, put them together, just perform one after another and it's seamless because it's the same prop. I think that is the way of going. So good luck, hopefully that works for you. Uh, what is a trick most magicians should know? That is a good question. I don't think that there is a trick that every magician should know, I, I in a way, I would like magic to be more like the music industry, where every artist has their own songs and occasionally people do covers. I would like it to be more like that, where everyone's performing something different. If I had to pick a thing that most magicians should know, it would have to be like a technique that's really, really versatile, uh, maybe a double lift or something like that. I know a lot of people would say the pass, I think the pass is maybe overused. Um, so yeah, let's say the double lift. Let's, let's go with the double lift. How would you go about finding a magic mentor? I can't find any sort of community online for my city, so I'm struggling to find a starting point. Magic clubs are a great uh, sort of place to start in finding a mentor, but I think nowadays, you know, mentors are a bit of a sort of archaic idea. That was when magicians didn't really share their secrets with anyone. You know, they sort of took on another magician and, and passed on the secrets. You know, magicians would literally perform their mentor's entire show in full and not change it at all, which I find bizarre, but that was just the way it was done. So Victorian era, you know, Houdin and, and Thurston, that sort of, you know, progression. So mentors, I don't think you need them anymore. I think you can use other learning materials books, YouTube, you know, memberships, all that sort of stuff. I think that is your mentor. Now we have such an access to information in a way that we didn't back then. So take advantage of it and, and don't become a carbon copy of the person that taught you, you know, <laughs> be your own magician. And I think we will leave it on that. I think that wraps up the Q&A. If you do have a question that you want to ask me for a future q and I do quite enjoy doing these, answering lots of questions in a video. So leave your questions down in the comments and I might reply to it in a future Q&A video. But now we need to talk about Illusionist and Kayla Morelli. How many times have I said we need to talk about Illusionist? There was some beef kicked up in the magic community. Can you kick up beef? I don't even know, but it happened. To give a bit of context to this, Kaylin had recently, I don't want to say got a job, I don't know how far along the process it was, but there were definitely talks that Kaylin had either joined Illusionist or was going to join Illusionist. I think he's a genius, first of all. I really respect his work. Some of the stuff he's come up with is not only inspiring, but absolutely beautiful. I think he is creating more than just magic. I think he's creating illusions that really represent a step forward in the art form. That is what I think of Kalen. I think he's honestly amazing. I respect him. But he's a character. He's a character, right? And I think he's self-aware about this, that he is not just an easygoing, you know, he, if he says something, he will say it and he will bloody mean it. And <laughs> it was quite interesting. I was on Instagram. I went on Instagram stories and I saw that 
Kayla Morelli had put something rather interesting, and it started out as just text posts. Illusionist let me go this morning. They were amicable about it, I respect that. I did not turn the magic community against them. My goal was to authentically build community around their brand to build anticipation towards future releases. The vision was misunderstood. My path will be hard, I will endure. Speaking your truth is not betrayal. Kalen put a couple more things on his Instagram story. I'll leave them on screen in case you want to read them. And then Illusionist respond with an email, but they screenshotted that email and put it on Instagram so that everyone else would be able to see it. And this is what they said. Kalen, we've read your posts. We want to know that our aim is the same as yours. We want to inspire a new generation of magicians too. That's why we hired you when you asked us for a job. We appreciate that vision. We're not about the number of releases, we're about the quality Illusionist always has been. Kalen had said that Illusionist were just focused on the number of releases and not respecting the arts that he wanted to do and the progression that he wanted to do. That Illusionist saw it as a business. But it is a business. <laughs> I mean, from my point of view, it's like, well, of course illusionists care about the money side of it. If they're going to the efforts of hiring someone, well, hiring a new member of staff isn't a small deal. It's a big deal, especially if it's a, you know, creative lead or whatever his title would have been, you know, head of creativity. I'm, I'm not sure what exactly the title would have been. Um, but if they're hiring someone like that, that's a big deal. So in a way, I, I can't fault illusionists considering it a business. It is quite literally their job. <laughs> it is their job to think of it as a business. Um, but I understand that maybe that would have impacted or in some way muffled or restrained uh, Kalen's creativity. So, you know, there's, there's sort of, I understand both sides in a way. Illusionist hasn't said no to any of your ideas. We can't think of a single example of how we've knocked back ideas or constricted you in any way. You wanted to do meaningful merch? We said yeah. You wanted to direct your own videos? We said yeah. You don't need to post about it on Instagram and make it something that it's not. It's literally the opposite of freedom you've been given here in the last week. <laughs> I find that ironic that we're reading this on Instagram and they're saying you don't have to put it on Instagram. I understand it's just a bit of funny irony. Um, regarding downloads that the CEO has been demanding, you had one email. That's it. One. It was nonchalant and did not have any deadlines in it. And it's in your letter of employment that your job here is to create saleable content. Yeah, this is the thing. Illusionist clearly are hiring Kalen to create content to sell, right? They're not just hiring him for fun. They're not just hiring him to have around the office and you know, be a nice guy. It must have been obvious to Kalen. It's clearly obvious to Illusionist. Maybe there was some miscommunication. I think that this is such an easily solvable issue that Kalen wants to do all these things, Illusionist wants to do all these things, but somewhere along the way, one email regarding the business side of things, which I think is totally fair enough on Illusionist's part, they're running a business, they've hired Kalen to do a job. I think that that has put Kalen off completely and Again, I understand both sides of the argument here. I understand that Kalen doesn't want to be tied down by deadlines and sales figures and all that sort of stuff because it doesn't interest him. He's not, he doesn't care about that side of it. He cares about making good content and inspiring new magicians, which illusionists do as well, but from a business point of view. And those two opinions have clearly clashed here. Now, honestly, we feel betrayed because you took some things that weren't true and tried to turn the community against us. This was what Kalen was referring to about that he didn't try and turn the community against Illusionist. I don't think that that was his intention. It might have, it might have had that effect, <laughs> but you know, I don't know if that was his intention to do that. This again feels like a massive lapse in communication. A team that welcomed you with open arms and that's been nothing but supportive during your first week. Clearly you're a lone wolf, an uncompromising artist. We respected it, we gave you a platform when nobody else would. I don't know if I agree, I don't know if I agree with it. I don't think that's helping the situation, calling him an uncompromising artist. That's a sort of backhanded compliment. Like, you know, lone wolf is a sort of compliment. Ah, oh, you're a lone wolf, but uncompromising? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if that's quite the right word. I don't know if I would have said that. Now, it's clear your vision doesn't align with ours. Is it? Is it clear? I mean, I don't know. From an outsider reading this, kind of seems like you both want to do the same thing. You just want to go about it in separate ways. <laughs> vision doesn't align with ours suggests that you want entirely different things. You don't. And I actually think that's why you've disagreed. We honestly wish you the best and can't wait to see what you create on your own. For the love of you as a person, we'll settle up your money with finance. 
uh, for the week that you were here and hopefully leave as friends who were just on two different paths. Very nice last paragraph and I really respect that they included that. Below the actual pictures of the email, we've had too many DMs to ignore. We'd rather not do this, but Kaylin has chosen to make it public. It's forced us to do the same, to clarify things for our audience. Honestly, we were completely shocked to wake up to several issues he raised on his Instagram stories that we heard nothing about. Okay, I mean, <laughs> Kaylin should not have gone public first. He should have settled it in private. But as we've learnt from past examples, <laughs> <laughs> Kalen doesn't like to deal with things privately, he likes to deal with it publicly because drama is promotion. As they say, any promotion is good promotion, and I think Kalen understands that. I, I can start drama. I want to promote the Magician Club just as much as anyone. Should I start drama? Actually, I, maybe I should. Hey, Lloyd Barnes. You suck. No, I can't do it. Lloyd's too nice. I can't, I can't start drama with Lloyd Barnes. He, He's too nice. It would be a good way of promoting the Magician Club though. Um, and talking of promoting things, uh, this is where, <laughs> believe it or not, it's not over. <laughs> I, I thought this would be it, but then a video got posted to Kaylin Morelli's Instagram story, and it was this. Teaching beginner magicians this bullshit, calling it good props, calling it good information, is fucking trash. Learn some real shit on my Patreon. <laughs> I mean, it's very Kaylin Morelli. It's funny, alright? Is it pointless? Yes. Is it sort of changing the topic of the argument? Yeah, kind of. And was it necessary? Absolutely not. I don't agree with doing that. I think that it's very petty and very childish. But, I mean, I'm here talking about it, <laughs> and at the end he promotes his Patreon, so it's free advertising. It really is. I think that it is a bit ridiculous, um, which is why I, I made this video, <laughs> which I am quite proud of. Teaching beginner magicians this bullshit, and calling it good props, calling it good information, is <laughs> fucking bullshit. I actually got I got a response from both Illusionist and Kayla Morelli, and they both found it funny, so I found something that they can agree on. <laughs> I'm bringing the community together. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't the intended purpose, but I'm glad that they both found it funny. At least I hope so, and that they weren't being sarcastic. Um, but yeah, there we go. I really wanted to make that video just because it's too good not to. He does go on to explain in another Instagram story exactly why he did this. When you limit beginners to a level of information that they expect where it's like if all beginners is oh i expect to do spongebob magic when i'm a beginner we all know spongebob is a good ass trick but should it be a trick that's still being done in 2022 kalen clearly wants to teach magic to beginners that beginners don't expect like he puts in his video if you teach beginners sponge balls they're kind of expecting that. They're expecting that and they're expecting the 21 card trick and the paddle move. Beginners should be respected and, and the intellect of beginners should be respected. And teaching beginners high quality magic that's still easy to do is absolutely fine, you know? It actually encourages magicians in a far more effective way. I believe that and I agree with Kalen on that point. Although, as I've said, I don't agree with the way that he went about it because I, I uh, I just think that it is a little bit petty, um, but there we go. That is this video. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed the Q&A and the little roundup of the drama that occurred over the weekend. It wasn't even the weekend. It was the middle of the week. Um, I'm losing track of time, clearly. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click the thumbs up button down below and subscribe as well if you're new and you made it to this point of the video. I think you'll enjoy my channel. I talk about magic, react to it, teach it, all things magic. So if you're a magician, click the subscribe button and... Uh, you can do your own magic trick of turning it from red into grey. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one, and I think there's only one way that I can end this video. All right, illusionist, take this. Learn some real shit on the Magician Club. Link in the description. <laughs> it's just an empty box, by the way.